So let's talk about access control method. Access control method. Still now we have seen the flow control, right? Uh, in general, there are two kinds of uh, links. One is broadcast link and other is point to point link. Okay. So broadcast links means I have a common channel to which many stations are connected okay I, this could either be wireless also and point to point means i have a source and i have a destination and both are connected by a single wire so this is called point to point channel and this is called broadcast channel now uh, coming to this uh, point to point channel there are you know there is no much difficulty here the reason is if this link is full duplex means if the data can go in both the directions and at any, any time you know it can go in both the directions then there is no problem with this so sender can send the data and receiver can receive the data and both of them can uh, transmit at any time there is no problem in this but coming to this uh, broadcast links the problem is since many stations are accessing the same channel at the same time what will happen is let us assume that stations are a b c d e something like this now if a is transmitting the data and at the same time if c e is transmitting the data uh, then there will be a collision right which means uh, the access to this link has to be controlled in such a way that at any time only one station has to transmit the data or even if more stations are transmitting the data there should be no collisions so they are called access control methods access control methods means whenever i have a broadcast channel only one station should send the data or if more than one station is sending the data there should be no collisions inside the channel if you could somehow make this happen then it is called access control methods there are various ways you know access control methods have been implemented i'll show you all the methods one by one So coming to access control methods, I will be discussing about access control methods which are you know useful in practice, practically used and moreover I will I'll try to teach it in a simple manner, uh, not complicated and uh, not getting into too much technical details like in phase, out of phase and all this. If you are interested in learning more about access control methods, you please refer to the book Forazon. So here I am not going to uh, get into more details whatever i teach here is going to be good enough for any kind of uh, interviews or uh, uh, no gate so let me say first one is tdm time division multiplexing so this is the simplest access control method so assume that this is the timeline time is starting with zero and you know it is increasing this way now what does this method say is you dip, you know you divide the entire time into something called as slots slots these are all called slots okay and now you give each slot to each station in a round robin manner let us assume that we have a broadcast channel and four stations are connected to this station number one station number two station number three station number four right then now what does this method say is divide the time into slots and assign each slot to each station which means this this state this slot will be given to one second station third station fourth station and again this process will continue continue in a round robin manner which means again station one station two station three so on okay and now what should be the size of each slot that is one thing you should observe so size of each slot should be how much time should we give to each station is if you give some time that station should be able to transmit the data and then that last bit transmitted should get out of the link right so the in worst case this station could be present at one end of the channel then from one end of the channel that last bit has to go out of the other end of the channel therefore uh, the time taken for this is tp so total time that should be given to each station so that they'll be able to transmit one packet and for that packet to get out of the link is tt plus tp 
here uh, for all these protocols i have one assumption my assumption is that all these stations wants to send packets of same size therefore tt is constant for all the packets that is not a practical assumption but in order to analyze it in a useful you know in an easy way i am assuming this and then tp is nothing but uh, worst case time if the station is connected in the at the one end of the wire then if the bit has to get out of that wire then the time taken is uh, tp so for every station the slot time is one is tt time taken to transmit the packet and then tp time taken for the last bit to come out so time is divided into slots and each slot is given to each one and uh, after station one accesses the when, while station one is accessing the link no other station will be given the access therefore at any time only one station will be accessing the link and so there will be no collisions with other stations right and once after this one slot is over then the station 2 will get the same slot tt plus tp and after second you know station 2 is over station 3 will get this slot again tt plus tp okay so what will be the efficiency or how are we utilizing the link here what is efficiency efficiency is always this efficiency is equal to cycle time cycle time means whatever is you know repeating over and again so cycle time and uh, useful time in the cycle time how much time are you able to use it so efficiency is always useful time upon cycle time so if you look at it in this in this case time is divided into slots and every slot is given to a station and a station is going to use it for tt and then wait for tp so what is the cycle here what is you know repeating over and again is uh, every cycle is repeating over and again isn't it this cycle is repeating again this cycle is repeating again therefore cycle time if you observe here is tt plus tp so cycle time is tt plus tp and useful time is we are transmitting one packet which means tt therefore efficiency is 1 upon 1 plus a dividing numerator and denominator with tt where a is tp by e. now we have seen that efficiency of uh, tdm is 1 upon 1 plus a where a equal to tp by tt okay so let's see a problem on this so if the question is given as generally they will give you you know length of the packet and then bandwidth and distance and velocity dip, you know using which you can find out tt value and tp value i am directly giving you that so if tt equal to 1 millisecond and tp equal to 1 millisecond if this is the case huh and uh, if they ask you for the efficiency of tdm then it is nothing but 1 upon 1 plus a so which is 1 upon 1 plus 1 so tp by tt is 1 right therefore it is 1 by 2 50 percent efficient okay and uh, they will continue the question with this if the bandwidth is given as 4 mbps 4 mbps then what is the effective bandwidth of throughput so effective bandwidth is efficiency into bandwidth so which is nothing but 50 percent into 4 mbps so it is going to be 2 mbps right so efficient effective bandwidth is going to be 2 mbps now uh, this one you understood so efficient this uh, effective bandwidth is this which means even though we are having 4 mbps we are not going to use it at a rate of 4 mbps we are going to use it only at a rate of uh, 2 mbps now the next question is if if n stations are connected to the uh, TDM network with this configuration where uh, TT is this, TP is this and bandwidth is this. If N stations are connected and if each station needs uh, 1 kbps or let us say 2 kbps. If N stations are connected to this network and if each station requires 2 kbps bandwidth then how many maximum stations can be connected? to this network understand this to the given in given configuration if you are using a channel now i'm saying that if n stations are connected to this channel and each stations you know require 2 kbps bandwidth then how many maximum number of stations can be connected uh, to this channel that is the question so let us assume that there are n stations 
then n every station requires 2 kbps and this should be equal to the available maximum what is available maximum 2 mbps so 2 mbps is equal to n into 2 kbps right therefore you are going to get n as 1000 so you can connect a maximum of 1000 stations to this uh, network right so that, that such questions are possible in this uh, tdm now coming to tdm we have seen that we are reserving these slots for some stations because of which there could be disadvantages right so let's see about the disadvantage of tdm so disadvantage of tdm is we have a channel and we are you know we are dividing the entire time into slots and we are giving away the slots to stations right now the problem with this reservation method is whenever you reserve a station a slot for a station uh, the station might not use it completely the reason is uh, it is not always true that every station will have some data to transmit it might not have some data to transmit at all then in that case whatever slot you have given is going to be wasted okay so this uh, this problem is always there with reservation therefore disadvantage of tdm is reservation whenever a station gets a chance to transmit which means it gets this slot but then it doesn't have any data to send so this entire slot is going to be wasted so that is why we go for the next method huh, let's now see the next method where we don't reserve this is called polling polling means this so instead of uh, directly giving some time to someone we just ask who uh, wants the time then they'll say i want the time then if someone asks then only we are going to give the time so assume that we have the same broadcast channel and many stations are connected to this now in this case we are not going to reserve any slot what we do is uh, let us assume that this is the timeline what we do is first we conduct a method called polling polling and polling is nothing but selecting someone among a b c d let us say i have selected station a after i choose one station then i will give it the chance how do i select this station is only if the station wants to transmit the data if the station doesn't want to transmit the data it is never going to participate in polling so don't worry about the polling algorithm just worry about the time taken to polling for this polling algorithm uh, discussing about the polling algorithm itself is out of the scope of this course i don't want to discuss about it but what i mean to say is in order to pick some station among these we need to apply a method called polling so after polling let us say uh, a1 so for this time taken is t poll okay and after a station gets the chance i mean if a station is picked up by polling then i am going to give that station the chance to transmit which means station a will get the chance to transmit and then that transmitted packet has to go out of the link right so one station if it has to get the access to the link it has to participate in polling for which some time is wasted and then it gets it gets the chance to transmit the packet and then it gets the chance to propagate the last bit now before giving the you know if for the next station to get the same thing again the next station has to get again involved in polling which means again the next station should get involved in polling and then the next station will get the chance to transmit and then propagate this will keep on happening right so what is the advantage of this method is no slot is ever wasted the reason is we are giving this slot only for the required stations and uh, second thing is there is a disadvantage in this method the disadvantage is it is not a fair sharing which means if uh, a st if a station a wins in the first polling it might win again in the second polling so because of which some of the stations might starve but i uh, you know we wanted efficiency we want the link utilization or link efficiency to be maximum therefore you know uh, this method is preferred in that case so what is the efficiency of this method so efficiency of this method is same uh, always efficiency is same so what is it cycle time you have to find the cycle time and then you have to find the useful time so now i want to find out the cycle time and then i want to find out the useful time then the efficiency is nothing but useful time upon cycle time so how can i find out you know useful time upon cycle time is 
just see the cycle here what is repeating over and again so if you see this this process polling transmission propagation and again polling transmission propagation and again polling transmission propagation right therefore cycle is nothing but polling transmission and propagation therefore cycle time is time taken for polling plus time taken for transmission plus time taken for propagation and among this entire time what is useful time useful time is time taken for transmission right therefore efficiency is tt upon t pole plus this one so again the same kind of questions can be asked so they will give you the time taken for polling and they will give you the time taken for transmission and propagation and in most of the cases propagation delay will be negligible that is why they might not give you propagation delay they will give you transmission delay and they will give you polling time then the efficiency is tt upon t pole plus t tt in case the propagation delay is negligible in case of lands propagation delay is very small because the link length is very small therefore propagation delay will generally be small so in that case tt upon t pole plus tt so anyway you can substitute the values in this and find out the efficiency and then you now they might give you the bandwidth and again the effective bandwidth is effective bandwidth or throughput or uh, utilization bandwidth utilization is again efficiency into bandwidth it is always going to be same right uh, and uh, one more thing is after finding out the uh, efficiency then effective bandwidth then they will say that there are n stations and every station wants uh, so and so bandwidth then how many stations we could connect at maximum like the one we have previously seen the same thing could be applied now what is the disadvantage of this method the disadvantage of this method is polling the polling time so before actually transmitting we should waste for some time in order to select a station so why are we doing this we are doing this to you know stop the disadvantage of tdm which was reservation right so now if we even don't want to uh, do polling and if you want to give the chance to stations which wants to transmit the data then we shall see the next method now